These mosaics are transcendental. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, welcome to another vlog. Today we are in the historic district of Trastevere in Rome. In today's vlog we're going to be looking at medieval mosaics that date back to the 13th century. So we're going to be traveling back in time all the way to the Middle Ages. These mosaics were executed by the Roman artist Pietro Cavallini around 1291. They are housed inside the Basilica of Santa Maria in Trastevere, one of the oldest churches in Rome, with foundations dating back to the 3rd century. Now in the city of Rome there was, and still is, a particularly special devotion towards the Virgin Mary. This basilica is devoted to her, Santa Maria, and the mosaics that we're going to be looking at narrate her life story. Think of them as a sort of visual biography. Now before we start, I just want to address a small misconception. The Middle Ages have typically been regarded as very dark and underdeveloped times, but in fact the Middle Ages were anything but dark. Some of the most amazing and dazzling works of art were produced in this period, and that's what I hope to show you today. So, without further ado, let's go inside and look at the mosaics of Pietro Cavallini. It's really hard to describe the feeling of utter awe that hits you when you walk into this basilica and see these mosaics for yourself. They really do take your breath away. So we're looking at a different medium of art today. Not painting, not fresco or sculpture, but mosaic. And what mosaics are, are basically pictures or decorations that have been composed with countless pieces of colored stone. This is time consuming craftsmanship and artistry. Now in this case, some of the mosaics used are spolia from early Christian medallions and vessels. So the very fabric of today's artwork is laden with history. Now the medium of mosaics is particularly apt and effective for church interiors. You have to imagine all these golden tesserae shimmering in candlelight, which is how they would have been seen. Now the mosaics in the semi-apse, they date back to the 12th century and we actually do not know who was responsible for them. They depict the crowned Virgin Mary seated in heaven beside Christ and surrounded by saintly and important figures. Above, around and below them are symbolic images and figures. Cavallini's mosaics were commissioned later and they form the frieze of panels below this larger scene. They will be the focus of today's vlog. So we're going to be looking at six panels, six scenes which narrate important events from the life of the Virgin Mary. They are arranged in narrative order, so they essentially tell a story. Each panel is framed with red tesserae and bears a Latin inscription. But bear in mind that Cavallini's iconography is very traditional and would have most likely been understood without the aid of these inscriptions. These narrative panels are full of life and bold colors. And most importantly, they give us a privileged insight into the medieval mindset and their visual culture. So firstly, on the far left, we have the birth of the Virgin Mary. The baby Mary rests atop the knee of a midwife who is testing the temperature of the water being poured into a vase by another servant for Mary's bath. I love Mary's pose. There is a dynamism oozing from her small body and she's sort of waving at us almost as if to introduce herself. Saint Anne, Mary's mother, lies languidly on her bed after having given birth to her child. She's being attended to by two servants who have brought her food. Then to the right in the next panel we have the Annunciation, the moment in which the Virgin Mary hears that she is carrying God's child from the messenger Gabriel. He can be seen to the left with these splendid wings striding towards the Virgin Mary. His drapery is billowing, thus imbuing his body with a sense of dynamism. Mary, who has been reading, sits on an elaborate throne. She looks taken aback by the news. Notice a dove descending from the face of God who breaches the scene. This is the Holy Spirit descending upon Mary. Very traditional iconography. The lilies symbolize Mary's spiritual purity and virginity. They are typically found in Annunciation scenes. So next we're jumping ahead to the nativity, the birth of Christ. This scene strongly resembles a very traditional and orthodox nativity scene. Here, the Virgin Mary and the baby Jesus are housed in an open cave, both a narrative and framing element. They are surrounded by the star of Bethlehem, angels, the figure of Joseph, and shepherds with their sheep and their watchdog. The donkey and ox looking over Jesus symbolize the barn setting where Mary supposedly gave birth to Christ. In this particular scene, you'll notice that rational perspective is being thrown out of the window for the sake of narrative purposes. Cavallini is purposefully collating events and figures in one scene in order to tell the full story. Now in this scene, in the scene of the nativity, we've got a strange structure that is being labeled as Taberna Meritoria. What this is, is a very old structure 
what was originally a refuge for retired soldiers on which the early foundations of the Basilica of Santa Maria were built. The brownish stream of water that runs from the small building down to the stream running along the bottom of the mosaic may represent the fountain of oil that, according to Eusebius, sprang up on the day of the Nativity and flowed for a week into the Tiber, which is not far from here. So this iconography is very, very particular to the history of this church, the Basilica of Santa Maria. The fourth panel depicts the adoration of the Magi. On the right, we have Mary in her traditional blue robes, supporting baby Jesus on her knees. Again, despite the fact that he is just a child, he is incredibly active and dynamic. He is shown interacting with the three wise men who have come bearing their gifts. The pink structure from which they have traveled is most likely Jerusalem, which in this case has been conflated and is being depicted very, very close to Bethlehem for narrative purposes. In the fifth scene, we have the presentation in the temple. Here, Mary and Simeon stand on either side of an altar with a baldachin. Simeon cradles the baby Jesus. On either side, we have Joseph holding two doves and the prophetess Anna. In the final panel, we have the Dormition of the Virgin Mary, what is essentially her funeral. The reclining Mary is surrounded by a large crowd of apostles and other figures, all of whom are expressing sorrow. To the right, St. Peter is waving a censer filled with incense. Christ stands behind the deathbed, surrounded by a red mandorla and two angels. He is cradling Mary's soul that is draped in a white vestment, symbolizing her rebirth. These mosaics were commissioned by somebody called Bertolo Stefaneschi, who has actually depicted himself in a mosaic below the narrative cycle in between the nativity and adoration scenes. He is being presented to the Virgin and Christ by Saint Peter. I think this is absolutely brilliant. Stefaneski was still very much alive when this mosaic was executed. Can you just imagine having yourself visually depicted in the presence of Christ and other saints for all to see and admire? It's very strange, but it was actually very common for patrons to do this, to visually present themselves in the presence of saints. In doing so, they were essentially hoping to experience a similar reception when they themselves reached heaven. Now, another thing that I find fascinating about this scene is that despite his very, very close proximity to St. Peter and to Christ and to the Virgin Mary, there is still a very distinct and clear separation between Bertoldo and these saintly figures. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, he's ever so slightly smaller in scale. And secondly, he doesn't form part of the gold backdrop, which forms the top half of this panel. He is permanently kept below this dividing line against a darker backdrop, which might denote the earthly sphere. Now, Cavallini was predominantly a painter, a fresco painter. This is actually the very first instance that we know of him executing a mosaic. But as you can see, he mastered both the technique and the material, creating these magical narrative scenes. What is particularly impressive in these mosaics is Cavallini's skillful rendition of the figures themselves. His figures possess a sculptural sense of weight akin to those of Giotto. The figures have these wonderful shadows beneath their chins and eyes, which gives them form. We can sense the forms of the figures' bodies through the modeling of their drapery. The fact that Cavallini has succeeded in achieving this in the unwieldy medium of mosaic is astounding. Like in his frescoes, there is an emphasis and need to evoke the three-dimensionality of his figures. We really sense that they are truly grounded in and inhabit their surrounding pictorial space. So while Cavallini's iconography is based heavily on old Byzantine and Western iconography, his relationship to figures and their placement in space is much more mature and classical. So we have a wonderful juxtaposition here. The medium of the mosaics themselves evoke this magical heavenly transcendence, and yet that is combined with figures that are so well grounded in space. And in that sense, there is a realistic quality to these mosaics. Another feature of Cavallini's mosaics to point out is his skillful rendition of architecture. Every scene features architectural props that somehow frame the figures or add dimension. I love these mosaics. They are a wonderful mix of realism, forced perspective, irrational perspective, and playful collation, all expressed by the means of glistening tessera. Consider just how powerful these works of art were for a religious audience lacking any form of modern technology. These works of art were literally their only visual gateway to a higher spiritual and heavenly realm. It allowed them to focus their prayers and religious contemplations on something concrete. These mosaics are exquisite and the only way to truly see them is in person. So if you're ever in Rome, you know where to come. All right, guys, so there you have it, the astounding mosaics of Pietro Cavallini. I really hope you enjoyed learning about this medieval work of art with me. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to let me know if you have any requests for future videos. I would love to know your wish list. As always, thank you ever so much for watching and see you next time.